boys and girls, and welcome to this edition of Digital Punch. My name is Benjamin Nelson, coming to you from the city of Chicago. In this episode, we're going to talk about a new game from the people who brought you Guitar Hero, a new way for you to charge your electronic devices, and we're going to talk a little Transformers. Episode 21 of Digital Punch. Hey, we're 21. We can drink now. Ah, thank you. Wait, no. I, I get drunk on life. No. Episode 21 of Digital Punch has begun. Ever have this happen to you? You get home at the end of a long day and you throw your phone, your MP3 player, your Nintendo DS, laptop, portable GPS unit, and your PDA, and well, you just throw them all on your desk. Then you hunt through your power adapters to find the right ones, untangle the wires, spend 10 minutes trying to find enough available outlets to charge them all. Well, fear not, because those days are over. Almost. Last month, scientists in the U.S. announced that they were able to send electromagnetic waves from a copper antenna that could power or recharge almost any small device within range, provided they have an antenna tuned into the right frequency. Now, people have done work on wireless electricity before, most noticeably with Splash Power, a pad that can recharge compatible devices by just placing them on it. But this new system could be integrated into a home to allow uninterrupted power wherever you leave your portable devices laying around. Very cool and very convenient. Unfortunately, however, they have decided to name it Electricity. For those of you who have ever sang with a hairbrush in front of a mirror, turned your steering wheel into a drum kit, or ripped massive guitar solos with a broom, well, it's time to join the millions already crushing riffs in the open with Guitar Hero 2. And now, with the terrible impression of a British rocker, is Doug. Right. Right. The sequel offers a brand new expanded track list for more than 55 songs in our larger selection of venues and new play modes. It play from hair metal, heavy metal, modern rock, and alternative rock. It, but wait, it gets better. Scheduled for holiday release is Rock Band, which will mix the guitar from Guitar Hero 2 with a bass guitar, a drum kit, and a mic. Rock Band will allow players to jam together in person or online to songs performed by the original artist. Cursive help of MTV. Bands signed up already include Almond Brothers, Joan Jett, Kansas, Nirvana, and Wolf Mother. Thank you, Doug. For, for those of you who'd like to rock, we salute you. If you're looking for Guitar Hero in stores near you, check out shoplocal.com and type Guitar Hero 2 into the orange search box. Rock on! Transformers the movie has been a huge success largely due to its star Optimus Prime and not since John Travolta has a celebrity enjoyed such a revival. But where has Optimus Prime been since his last movie success in 1986? Here at Digital Punch we took an in-depth look at the star's long journey back to the top. In the year 1986, Optimus Prime was a household name. Transformers was at its peak, so naturally Hasbro Studios decided to cash in on this money cow with Transformers the movie. Optimus enjoyed tremendous success, but soon felt he had outgrown television, and after many failed contract negotiations, he asked to be written off the series. In Transformers the movie, Optimus Prime's death was one of the greatest in cinematic history, behind only Sonny Corleone, and Bambi's mom. After his departure, Optimus Prime landed a flurry of movies including Duck and Cover and The Bot Next Door, but they were panned by audiences and critics alike. A lukewarm box office response would also cause TriStar Studios to pull him from the Short Circuit series, only to be replaced by Flash in the Pan robot Johnny Five. Optimus Prime's downward spiral had just begun, and rumors of addiction and depression covered the tabloids like stink on a monkey. But Optimus continued on. This time testing his musical skills with the album Transform My Heart, which would receive generous reviews from critics, but only managed to sell 20,000 copies. The peaches of Prime's success had gone rotten, and his life was in the pits. Shortly after his failed album, Prime would have a run-in with the law. Optimus would be brought in on possession and DUI charges after authorities found nearly 10 Energon cubes in his chassis. Prime had hit rock bottom, but hope was not lost. After a brief stint in jail, Optimus would receive help from the most unlikely of sources, Starscream. Facing similar charges in the past, Starscream advised Optimus to seek help at rehab. Prime took to rehab like a geek to Mountain Dew, 
and in no time he was clean. Optimus Prime had a second chance on life, and with it, he would travel the globe. On the spiritual journey, Prime would visit Mecca, the Vatican City, volunteer in Rwanda, and even seek meditative guidance from Buddhist monks of Sri Lanka. Optimus Prime was reborn, and with the success of robotic actors in such films as I, Robot, Bicentennial Man, and Wide Earp, the stage was set for Optimus Prime's return for Transformers the Movie in 2007. A movie that would raise $70 million in its first week alone and catapult Optimus back to the top. Every week here in Digital Punch, we devote time to you, the viewer. We love it when you send us questions, feedback, suggestions, and other things like that. So get us going. Yes, it's Doug, the British rocker. Right, right. Uh, Guitarist Blaze writes, P.S. I love you guys, but I'm a girl. O-O-B. I don't know what that means. I don't either. His royal doodliness writes, hadn't heard a sport before. Wow, this was actually useful. Not funny, but slightly useful. One star. L-O-L. Thank you for the one star. Flanny says, the Wii Elbow piece might have been the best segment ever. Really, very well done, boys. Love the new faces in life. The show is better with all the new creativity. And Marsha Loftus says, L-O-L. Okay. This was good. I wish I had friends like you. I love the Wii Elbow skit. Nicely done. You're our friend, don't worry. All right, if you'd like to be a guest host on our show and you can be in Chicago during an afternoon, let us know. We can try to get you on the show. See ya. Well, that'll do it for this episode of Digital Punch. Special thanks to Chris Quinn, Doug Werder, Vince Portacci, Seen Ketchum, and to me for making this episode possible. As always, you can go to digitalpunch.tv to get reviews of the things we talk about and leave us comments and a whole bunch more. That'll do it for this episode. I'm punching out. I got it. Oh, oh. I have that beer now. Oh.